Hi, this is John Reed. If you're listening to this, that means that I have produced uh, successfully the second part of the Zero podcast with Brian Summer, which we recorded on site in Austin. I had a small issue with the taping, so you'll hear uh, me splicing in from the backup recording a couple of times. So that's why my voice will sound different on a couple of occasions here. But I felt it was still worth releasing the second part. There's some pretty interesting stuff around Zero and blockchain, some more stuff on AI, some more stuff on moving into the U.S. market, a bit more on small business challenges and cloud and such. Uh, and also Brian and I proposed a name for zero, uh, chat bot of the future, which has not been announced or anything, but we're offering our services in that regard. And just so you know, the way this works is this is the part two. So if you haven't heard part one, you might want to check that. But at any rate, I'm going to pick up this at right at the beginning of the part two, which is Brian has just finished talking about, uh, whether he thinks zero is going to be successful in, uh, reaching accountants in the U.S. to drive its practice here and drive its adoption. And I then move in, and you'll hear the beginning of this talking about the unsolicited feedback I gave to Zero's marketing team around their U.S. pursuits. So uh, enjoy. Yeah, I, I talked with their marketing team and gave them some unsolicited John Reed advice, um, which... <laughs> Which, to some extent, I think they're actually already taking, so it wasn't like I brought up anything new and exciting for them. Well, but that's, but, see, that's the whole thing about your advice. It's yeah. worth what you pay for it. Yeah, anyway. yeah, okay. yeah. Well, <laughs> I got a nick wooden nickel anyway. I wonder <laughs> if I can buy something from that from this store here. <laughs> but anyhow, um, the, the, um, the two things I said were, um, and which reaches to your point, which is, Build goodwill through education. In other words, yeah. for those accountants that want to change, make it. You already pointed out before we started taping that they offer a free trial of their software. But in terms of like developing courseware around becoming an advisor, building a growth practice, not a bookkeeping practice, developing as much materials around that. But I also would like to see zero build goodwill through policy advocacy for small businesses because you have this huge tax bill looming right now that's going to get passed. And, and small businesses are really an afterthought in these kinds of policy considerations. And also, when that changes, accountants are going to spend the next six months trying to understand what those changes mean for their clients. A lot of that could be automated and packaged and brought back to accountants in a way that's easy to consume. And I think there could be enormous amounts of goodwill generated if they get some visibility around helping small businesses and advocating for them in this environment because they're often overlooked. So that's my marketing pitch for that. Well, let me, um, I'll pile on. I, uh, earlier this fall, I was uh, helping out with an accounting show for the American Accounting Association. And one aspect of that show that I didn't have any part of, but it was fascinating, is they brought up on stage uh, about four recent accounting graduates from major university accounting programs. And each one of them worked for one of the major accounting firms. And the moderator was asking a bunch of questions about what it is you really want to do in your career and so forth. To no surprise, it turned out that for those in the audit profession, they don't want to spend the next two or three years of their career interning at the photocopier. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to be a business advisor. And they don't want to do the debits and credits, just like you were describing, John. They actually want to be providing advice and counsel to clients. Right. And this is coming out of the mouths of like 21, 22 year olds. And, um, and I think, I think some of the audience was kind of chuckling thinking, yeah, right. Like that's going to happen. But on the other hand, that's what these folks are interested in. They, they don't want to play with your grandpa's ERP system anymore. They want to work on something that more fits with the kind of life and experience, digital experience that they've grown accustomed to already. One interesting piece of this puzzle is that as, as empowering as it can be for a small business to figure out how to make these transitions and now I have a cloud platform and now I can add a PayPal service easily or, or an expense service easily. There's one thing looming in the middle of it that's frustrating and difficult, which is the banking industry itself. And this came up yesterday because you have the, uh, I don't want to say diplomacy, maybe lack of diplomacy. Uh, you have the ability to disrupt the banking panel we were attending, uh, which was really entertaining for everyone that was there. Do you want to say what your grievance was there? Uh, I can't believe you're going to go back on there and get into this. Well, let's do it. All right. Well, um, 
I just found that it's a little hard to swallow listening to big commercial bankers talking about the value that they're going to pass along to small businesses. And the gist of my grief is that for my business, the only thing the bank sees out of me is an opportunity to provide an annuity of fees uh, that they're going to charge me. I've never gotten any value from my bank. In 15 Which is what you said to the the, pan, the panelists, right? You were basically like, uh, I'm having trouble understanding Yeah, I, I the really value. was having trouble figuring out where this alleged value was coming from because I wasn't seeing it. And when I, It was an awkward moment, folks. It was uh, an awkward moment. But where I went with the point was there's a reason why there are so many technology companies disaggregating the banking experience. And I mentioned companies like Invoice Pay, Mineral Tree. There's a whole bunch of them out there that are, you know, chipping away at things to help companies, even smaller firms like my own, go around commercial banks uh, because they just don't deliver the service. Anyway, yeah, I, I okay, I'll cop to the fact that I, I definitely put the uh, the laser sighting on the commercial bank guys and rifled them pretty good. Hey, I enjoyed the awkward silence in the room, <laughs> but but to, but more importantly, just in terms of the takeaways from that. Do you think that that zero can work around what arguably the lack of innovation in 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 that core banking conglomerate by essentially providing services and integrating because a lot of these banks are making their feeds more available so they can kind of get around some of that yeah they're doing there's they're they're tackling this on a couple of fronts number one, they know they need to work with the major banks. Because uh, a lot of their customers have those kind of accounts and relationships, okay, and they do so, have partnerships with, with some of them. Already. Yeah, oh, they yeah. are. One Capital Wells One was here. Uh, Wells Fargo had a big exhibit going on, and others. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank was another one that yeah. we saw. On the other hand, uh, they kind of can read. They're reading the writing on the wall. And that's why they have, uh, that's why PayPal's here. And they know that they've got customers, uh, they have software customers who are accepting payments, uh, like with Square. And we heard a number of, uh, small businesses on a panel and it seemed like every single one of them was taking payments through Square or one other type of tool because they were commenting about the need to have even greater, deeper, fuller integration between what Square sends them every day on um, receipts, and they wanted more tagging, if you will, of the individual kind of line items on where the revenue came from. And they know that, and I kind of liken this too, if you asked my dad to pay you, he'd only give you cash. My wife, uh, excuse me, I'll only write you a check. My wife will pay you in PayPal. My son, uh, I have no idea how he pays for anything. Um, my daughter only does online banking, and I go on and on. We're experiencing right now an age where there are multiple different ways that people pay things, whether it's NFC, you know, stuff on dongles or in cell phones. And, you know, Zero has to be like any good software company. they got to be able to play with them all, and not right. just one or two. And maybe the banking industry withers away a little bit and, and, and in that sense while these edge services take over. The other interesting thing in terms of taking all forms of payment is uh, I found it refreshing that they didn't pit, pimp uh, the hell out of blockchain like most vendors did this fall. But the audience, there was an audience question about it, though. Yes, was, there was. Uh, and I, I think the... Um, I think blockchain kind of got poo-pooed, and some of that may be because maybe they don't see it as terribly viable for the very small business world. Right. And, and there's probably some relevancy to that. Um, uh, and I also think the conversation went immediately to like from blockchain to cryptocurrency. And, right. And I'm not sure that rabbit hole was necessarily where you wanted to go with this, where yeah. the, I think the smart money is on some of this right now is actually using um, blockchain to provide the provenance all, all throughout the supply chain or the value chain and keeping track of stuff to avoid counterfeit goods and other items. And that's, and that's one thing we talked with the CEO. Uh, I talked with CEO Rob Drury about that in my interview with him because he also says that he sees viable cases like that. And, and he says if that gains traction, that it would not be hard for them to support. That would be almost like blockchain as a subledger, for example, of a particular kind of 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 data feed that you could tie into zero. But uh, he did have a back and forth with an audience member about cryptocurrency support because there was this question around, well, right. will you support that? And 
And, and I asked him about that again one-on-one, and he said, yeah, uh, we have a partner that's working on that now, and I think at the moment they're, that's how he looks at it because he doesn't – he doesn't think he, he views these as a speculative market that are not going to be uh, endorsed by governments, and so he's not in any huge hurry there. But so I found it refreshing that it wasn't overhyped. No, um, and uh, just one last thing on um, you know it was, it, we need to think about who zero is and where they're going to go next. And I think it's an important question to bring up because in my mind, Zero starts off as a financials vendor. They've now added an expense processing capability, a payroll capability, a projects module, and some other stuff were all announced here recently and demoed to the audience. Uh, the strategy Zero seems to have is to create ever larger portfolio of applications and, but yet still stay true to the small business, uh, world. They're, Alternatively, they could have aspir- had a, shown us aspirations to move up market. I didn't see any real demos that showed uh, huge deepening functionality or complexity being added into the applications. In fact, I would tell you that from a UI and UX perspective, the stuff is still clean and st- simple and straightforward as all yeah. get out. I mean, it's so obviously intuitive. And the reason this is important is we need to know where is zero going. Mm. And I don't think they're going to go up market. And that may, that may temper why they will or won't investigate some things, whether it's algorithmic, kind sure. of logic or blockchain, whatever. I think all that has to be in the context of the product roadmap on where they're going to take the firm. Yeah. And I, I talk with a couple of their executives about this because I, I, I do think that they realize that there, there will be room for more predictive capabilities in their system, for example. But it, it would not be the kind of thing where you would say to small businesses, hey, we have AI inside your your software. It would be more like, hey, you're going to get an alert when there's a when we see a chance for you to uh, renew terms with a supplier or yeah. or a new sales. So I could see them building in more sort of predictive and alert based stuff in the future and tackling it that way. Yeah, but, more collaborative but, capabilities, all that kind of stuff. I could see that coming in. Yeah, and, and they've were, added some of the collaboration features this time around. They were showing off some yeah. new stuff. Um, but I think you're right about the small the small business focus, and and that was the case that they were making because they you, you would might have expected them to kind of maybe poke fun it into it a little bit, but in if when they brought them up, they brought them up more as a partner possibility that we need to interact with Intuit and be able to share data and information that we're actually talking with them. And I think part of that mentality is that they feel that the bigger opportunity is with all these small businesses that have not signed on to anything. Well, well the stats on the amount of small businesses running cloud financial software, very small percentage. And to me, that's the market it looks like they're going after. So there was a, uh... There's maybe two things I can think of that we haven't really touched on yet on this interview. Uh, I think I know where you're going. And uh, one of them was they had a really interesting panel this morning on diversity. That's one. And um, uh, I kind of blanched when I saw some of the uh, pathetic numbers on how diverse like accounting partners are in the world. But um, I thought it was great that there was a, a, a strong, healthy discussion on that. But the other thing was, there were some technology things you and I have seen at dozens of events this year. Oh, uh, yeah. And I don't think we heard boo on those at this event today. So how should do we you, make our announcement? I think we should. <laughs> we actually made a product decision for zero. Yes, uh, we did. And last night it, it, it came to us in an inspired moment. It hasn't been formally approved yet, but I think that's just a, <laughs> just a formality at this point. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, John and I, last year we did a thing called the Unpredictions, and we predicted all kinds of things that we were going to see yeah. this year at user conferences. And we're going to do that again and for this next year. Oh, way, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's an advanced plug for something that's it's uh, coming. Already, already in the works. Um, <laughs> look, look, check out for Diginomica.com. It's coming. Okay. But anyway, last year we, un- we, we opened up the crystal ball. We uncannily predicted all kinds of things that were <laughs> going to be happening at user conferences. And we predicted drone flybys, um, and calamities that would happen when CEOs were handled, uh, handed the uh, controls to a drone. Uh, we knew, we talked about everything from, um, uh, autonomous vehicles showing up at user conferences and on and on. And for the most part, I'd have to say, um, the hype meisters that put these shows together, 
they've been reaching in the goodie bag and bringing out all kind of junk. Oh yeah, they came through and are, and made us look like. Darn near incredible savants. <laughs> well, the the one thing we saw quite a lot of this year were chatbots, and 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 of course every chatbot needs a name. Yep. Usually you pick a historical figure that your chatbot cannot possibly ever live up to. Yep. <laughs> and we've heard them all. There is, uh, 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 we've, we've gone had, from Einstein to Leonardo to yep. uh, uh, Coleman over yep. in four. Uh, uh, there's, uh, um, oh, the folks over at, um, unit four have one. Um, I've heard of Ellie and, uh, a number of others. And Anyhow, so Zero's gonna eventually need a chatbot. They're gonna, gonna need one for sure. And, and it's gonna need a name. Yeah, it can't be Siri or Alexa or any of those. So and we got, fortunately, we have a name. We have a name. So <laughs> when they do come out with it, uh, we just, all we want, we're, we're not asking for royalty or fee or anything here. At least I'm not. I just want the some, regi- some residuals to be all right, but it's not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> and John, go ahead. Let's uh, get the drum roll. What is that name that we came up with? Kiwi. That's Can I right. see my financial records for October 2013? Uh, John, your financials uh, revenue for this quarter is two hundred million dollars. Anyhow, with any luck, next year we'll see Kiwi for the first time. Yep, Kiwi. I can see people reaching out and tapping on the device, going, "Kiwi, you know, um, what do we have to do to grow our small business even more?" I, th- I think the biggest thing for me, just having gone to so many larger enterprise shows this year, is the issues weren't really that different. I think the only real difference in the small business environment is 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 maybe lack less resources to tackle the problem, right? So it's like, you know, yeah, there was some talk about dashboarding here, but I didn't hear as much of that because these small businesses, they don't have as much time and resources to throw up metrics and numbers and check on them all the time. But it's the same desire, which is to to have more data transparency and more collaboration with partners and 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 a big theme here also is for small businesses how do you help them grow given that the entrepreneurial climate in the US hasn't fully rebounded from the recession and and one of the big themes to that is is have this platform but also uh connect internationally globalism is a big theme here yep. import and export so you know, and small businesses being able to do that in ways they haven't been able to in the past. So, you know, I just think it's interesting. The themes don't really change. It's just there's some different resource constraints and stuff, but that's about it. I would uh, just tweak that and say themes are the same. It's the relative priorities. Here, uh, it seems like number one priority of these businesses, cash is king. Yeah, yeah. And they care. And that's the one metric they do watch every single day because yeah. they got to make payroll. They got bills to pay and keep the lights yeah. on. That was number one. And number two was probably uh, what you just said is how do I grow? And there is, um, there's a, you can tell that these customers have a hunger to figure out how to make that happen successfully. Right. Um, so anyway. Well, thanks, Brian. I think this is our last one of the year. Well, yeah, but uh, next year maybe all we'll have to do is tap Kiwi and go, Kiwi, what did Brian yeah. and John think about the last uh, ZeroCon? I hope the Zero developers are already hard at work <laughs> fulfilling these dreams. All right, folks, have a good one. Well, if they need inspiration, they can come here to this office. <laughs> Later. <laughs>